brought to you by Next Lines, video lighting tools for filmmakers. And now, your feature presentation. Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Scene, the show that teaches you Hollywood techniques on an indie film budget. I'm your host, Tony Rialli, and today I want to talk about a project that we were commissioned for. Our last episode of Film Scene, we showed you uh, another project we were commissioned for called Escape the Matrix. Uh, this one was a, a similar project. Uh, the client, uh, Dr. Patrick Flynn, had seen our Escape the Matrix film a- at the men's conference that it was commissioned for and really loved it and wanted something similar for a conference he was doing. He was doing a wellness conference. He's a chiropractor, and uh, they were doing a conference about health and wellness, and he wanted something for his signature speaks, speech. So when he was going to be going up to do his talk, he wanted something that hit a really high-energy moment and really got people to pay attention. So similar to what we did with Escape the Matrix, he wanted an action intro. Uh, we worked together. Jim DeGroat, my creative director, uh, came up with a general idea of a scene where Patrick was kidnapped uh, by a secret agency that was working for the bad guys, um, the uh, the food, the fast food companies, and and all the the people that contribute to bad health out there. And they were they didn't want him to to talk at the conference. And then Patrick ingeniously gets freed. And he he's able to do a little fisticuffs with the bad guys. Uh, is able to get away from them, and then he ends up running through the front door of the conference to a cheering crowd, and everybody's excited. So it was it was very successful. We we were really excited about it. Uh, but working with somebody like Patrick, uh, who is on a tight schedule, we needed to be able to, to shoot this in a very short period of time. It wasn't a very long video, but still. Doing action filming, uh, it takes a long time because you get to choreograph every single punch, every single angle, and it takes a long time to shoot it. So to speed things up, my first goal was to basically shoot this in uh, with the maximum amount of coverage and basically light it once and then shoot. Uh, traditionally, it would have been easier to light every angle or at least light primary shots but due to the, the time limitation we had, again, I wanted to shoot this, light it once, and then just shoot the rest of the evening. Uh, so when I was setting up the lighting, uh, at first I was, I was moving some LEDs around. I had some tungsten lights. And I basically decided that uh, the only, in order to give me as much 360-degree coverage as possible, uh, I needed to have the light up high. So to motivate it, I basically had a... Uh, a lamp uh, with a, a cool bulb that we found at Home Depot, and that was just hanging from the ceiling. We clamped that to just one of the pipes that was hanging from the ceiling, and that became the motivation, the practical light for the scene. Then we uh, we took a 650-watt Ari light, and we found um, that there was this brick wall that was just kind of sticking in the middle of the of the empty room. And so I found I got a little stand, stuck it up there, and pointed the 650-watt light down. And that kind of then was the actual light for the scene. The, the bulb practically wouldn't have lit the entire area, but we needed to look like it was. So we had that 650-watt light that was then shining across it. Then I had another 650-watt light that I shone on the background behind the doctor because otherwise the wall was going to be way too dark and it was just going to look like he was uh, in this this dark area. And I wanted the wall to be bright enough so that it was just visible. But I didn't want it too bright that it was overtaking him. So I flagged the 650 down. And so just a little beam of light was just hitting the back wall, just enough to bring it up to where it needed to be. Uh, And then the main uh, other light that was in the scene when the bad guy walks in for the first time is uh, just we, there was a halogen light that happened to be sitting there, and I liked using that as a practical, so I just pointed that uh, a couple directions. I finally found a spot that I liked where I was kind of bouncing off the wall and the back wall, and that lit up the uh, the yellow wall behind uh, the talent for the bad guys because uh, otherwise it would have been just a dark abyss, and I did not want it that dark. So all in all, we had a three-light setup, and that was how we shot the entire video. Uh, I didn't. I had minimal relighting. The one thing I did have was I had I had the 650 on a dimmer. So if if for some reason when we had shots that were uh, towards the ground and the light was a little too bright because it was a, a light gray uh, floor, I was able to dim the light just a little bit so that it wasn't blowing out the the floor too much. But all in all, we then cheated the actors to keep them within the radius of the 650. 
and it worked pretty darn well. We wrote in a part where the doctor gets in a, f- a phone call from the guy that is actually on stage announcing him. Uh, I, while they were on stage, what happened was the person um, goes to check his phone to try and get a hold of Patrick, and then the video started playing. And then we get a, a phone call in the video of the person saying, Patrick, where are you? And uh, and Patrick gets that phone call and reveals that he had uncuffed himself and then he surprisingly throws the phone at one of the bad guys to disable him for a little bit while the other, he starts punching the other guy. So anyways, we didn't want to actually throw a real phone at the person's face because that wouldn't be the healthiest thing. So we wanted to uh, do it in post. Now we discussed the possibility of having a rubber phone. We discussed the possibility of doing it uh, in 3D. And what we basically decided to do in the end was to shoot it with uh, in, in real time in the camera um, – with the actor reacting as if he actually got hit by a phone, and then we digitally added the phone later in post. Um, so the way that we did this, we shot it in slow motion, so we had a few more frames to work with in After Effects. Uh, then uh, Sean actually rotoscoped out the phone, and we placed it over and then played around with the motion blur effect until we got it close enough to what we were looking for. And in the end, it looks like he's actually getting hit in the face with the phone. So that's pretty much it. Lighting a scene like this isn't always ideal, but it kept us really, really quick, moving fast and able to set up and tear down in a short period of time, but still being lit with a, a good amount of drama in a way that I was very happy with. So you can check out the entire video in the link below and stay tuned for future episodes of Film Scene where we talk about lighting and other Hollywood techniques. Thanks for watching. Want more Next Wave DV in your life? Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube to be notified when the next episode airs. Visit our website for daily posts on the latest digital video news. Like us on Facebook to join the Next Wave DV community. And follow us on Twitter for behind-the-scenes news and pictures.